It's not easy being broke. So you wanted right? Muslims money? They were trying to pay me to marry a girl for citizenship. Oh. So what kept you going through three years? Because that's a very long time. I'll tell this story and this is like the hardest part of it all. So that's where it started. I don't work for no one anymore. Did you have any bank account that time? Nothing, nothing. I couldn't afford a haircut. I'm getting a lot of family pressure. My parents think I'm wasting my life at this point. So you were targeting Muslims. You target them. mosques. How much money would you say you spent on just learning? Over 100k before I made money. Am I going to go work for someone for the rest of my life and build someone else's dream? Or am I going to bet on myself? COVID, where my account went from just less than a couple K to like, I had that boom moment. What, what right? numbers are we talking about? Alarm <laughs> Oh my God, I don't want to see this on a podcast. You, you, you got to beep this. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. People, welcome back to another episode of Righteous and Rich. This is the podcast where we show you that there is no contradiction behind aspiring to be righteous and aspiring to be rich. We are joined today by a very special guest, a brother very near and dear to my heart, Mr. Hashi from Canada. His brother Alam Barak is a very special brother and I'm going to share a bit more insights with regards to him, introduce him formally, properly in a bit. But first, we've got Mr. Abid, aka Young Musafir. He's the man behind the camera. Now today he's in front of the camera. He's a man of many tricks. Um, if he performs well, there's a lot of pressure on him. He pressure. may be a consistent co-host. If he performs well, people are watching, they're going to be judging you and the comments, they're going to be letting us know. Keep him. Or not His younger brother's over there He wants to go to space He wants <laughs> to go to the moon We might consider him As a co-host as well We've got Mr. Abu Bakr Who's the official host of the show Temporarily I'm just Ah just own it bro Nah brother Just accept it Nah brother Just accept it Is your take Just take it Maybe we'll see <laughs> But anyway we've got Abu Bakr Allah and Barik And as you guys know Abu Bakr This is the young Musafir This is the Musafir Who copied who <laughs> who's, who's younger who's, who's older Allah Alam But Surprisingly they both didn't meet when they started their journeys as travelers. The travelers. travelers. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> Brother Muhammad Hashi. Introduce yourself. Ah, my name is Imran. Why don't you do an introduction for him? Given that he did one for you. This he called Imran, you the boss. Imran, Dawah Man, Dawah Man Dawah's Returns, you know. Imran <laughs> Ibn Mansur. He goes by so many names, you know. He has a whole lot of different things. We did events with each other where's my bay he has all these creative names he's big in the that was seen mashallah he's from london i can go a little deeper but i'll stop it there mashallah, there's a lot of good work in the Dawa community <laughs> oh, <jazakallah khair>, <laughs> alhamdulillah dawah is dead though dawah is dead there's a new beginnings new beginnings um so mashallah tabarakallah you know we <clears throat> mean you obviously go way back um yeah i actually know you longer than Abu Bakr. yeah yeah i actually know you longer than Abu Bakr. and um the way we got to know, we got to meet is uh, uh, you guys were doing a conference over in Ottawa. And uh, alhamdulillah, I came over, you guys gave me an invitation. And to be honest, we connected, man. And, and one of the things that really kind of drew me to you, bro, was your hospitality. So, Allah, but I, is that a Canadian thing in general? Or is it a Somali thing? Or is it a Hashi thing? I really don't know, man. Maybe it's a fusion. Fusion one. Yeah, most people don't care. It's, well. Yeah, Allah, but I think it's a Muslim thing. It's I was a, just yeah, about to say I think it's a Muslim thing It's supposed thing. to be a Muslim no, thing No you're right It's supposed to be a Muslim thing But in the West Many lose it right mm. Yeah mm -hmm. But I, I I do notice that Somalis Mashallah They really have that concept Of taking care of their guests mm. I've kind of noticed it in, Arabs have it as well uh, yeah, Of course yeah <clears> time, <throat> Yeah and they have a lot of Commonalities in terms of Cultural things um, Of course there's other One two brothers I know from Canada That are also very serious On the whole guest thing as well Right So I thought maybe It's a Canadian thing But Mashallah You must have combined Between it all Barakallah feet, man. Yeah, well, we had a great time, man. We had a great yeah, time. Alhamdulillah, yeah. We had a I came time. there. We did like a little tour went across the country. Then I came back again. We decided to do things a bit crazy. Yeah. I remember that till today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was the last time. Uh, last time you were in North America. Last, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a, yeah. Wow, it was a long time. Yeah, yeah. I remember time. when we went to Seattle, we got stopped at the customs. Yes, sir. We went to, that was the last time we went to the United States of America as well. I haven't been back since. Um, <clears throat> but actually, since then, you know, mashallah, tabarakallah, you've been on a bit of a journey. So you were involved in the da'wah and then you started, you know, uh, business. And we met just before COVID, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And you're going for a bit of a hard time, right? Yeah, yeah alhamdulillah, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll start from the beginning a little bit, right? Um, you know, I was born and raised in Canada. Um, the youngest of six, you know, came from a two-parent household, alhamdulillah. 
Uh, I went to Islamic school most of my life. Now, I know the podcast is right, rich, um, Righteous and Rich, and inshallah, that's what we aspire to, but <laughs> I'm neither right now is what I feel like, and I'm trying to, inshallah, accomplish that eventually. Um, yeah, so I did, was doing undergrad. I did engineering. I did chemical engineering. I wasn't a big fan of it. Like, you know, I had mixed feelings towards it. Some classes I would do really good. Some I wouldn't do good. I think in the middle of it, I... Um, is it university you're doing? University, university, yeah. Yeah. So you don't you, you so so degree wise you yeah you have a degree in chemical engineering yeah, yeah I have a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering okay so how yeah, did you man. get into marketing <laughs> yeah exactly so well um, I did some internships I worked at Shell in the middle and this is where it comes to I, I did not like the work right when I worked at a refinery I used to work for Shell and you know you have to shave your beard on site you know what I mean you have to do a lot of things and I was really depressed I did not like it one bit I had mixed feelings towards that too some days at work are good some days are horrible but it's just depressing I was working in Edmonton and I used Edmonton Alberta and you work in a small town outside like Fort North right Fort, not Fort McMurray this one was called Fort Saskatchewan okay right? Fort McMurray is like five hours north right I was working and you guys have to worry about bears and all that madness right? I wow. remember you'd get up go to work and it's dark so I'm getting up at like 5 36 go to work I'm not lying to you. You don't see the sun the whole day sometimes. Because of how far up north it is. Yeah, not only that, it's just like the, the sun comes down early in Alberta, right? Uh. And so by Maghrib time, it's 4.30 or something, right? Mm. Especially in the winter. So you come home, it's dark. It, it was. And if I'm not mistaken, just for people, correct me if I'm wrong, to give them some context, Edmonton, which is mm. in Alberta. Yes. And you're above it. Edmonton is the is the most northern city, in city with a million people. Yeah, most northern urban city is yeah, what they most call northern it. urban city, yeah. And, mm. and, and it's cold. It's extremely cold. It's extremely cold. Yes. Yeah. Oh, curiosity. You, you said you didn't like it. Is it because it was hard work, and you're not someone that likes hard work, or was there something else about it that you didn't like? What was it specifically about the work that you didn't like? No, the, the work itself was actually like it was okay, right? But do I enjoy this? Do you know what I mean? Right? Like I can go in and do a good job. They wanted me to come back and work for them. There's money, right? right? Yeah, it, it was good money at the time. I remember the vibe that I used to get from the brothers in Canada mm -hmm. was, "Oh, we're just gonna go do." Yeah. You know how like drug dealers they say we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go, they say country. Right, they okay. mean they're gonna go to the countryside, make some money, and come back, which is obviously haram. Mm -hmm. Like it was like that. These guys would be like, "Oh, we're gonna go to Alberta, yeah, like, work for a quick month, come back." And it was big money because the oil refineries, yeah, right? It's an oil rich state. It's, a, yeah, Alberta, yeah, yeah. it's an oil rich state. Oil -rich. So they would they would pay money people who work for them. Mm -hmm. And these brothers were just going and doing shifts from Ottawa. They would go to Edmonton and come people back. came from the UK. Believe oh, wow. it or not, there's people from the UK who had some sort of Canadian. So tell us about the bears, because I remember, I remember you guys would tell us some crazy horror stories. Like you're you're, you're working, mm -hmm. and literally you could be eaten alive by a bear. Well, not eaten, well, slit in half. Yeah, there, 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 like, it didn't happen to me, but like you know, there was like incidents, <laughs> especially up north, right? Like <laughs> I lived like my work was like 40 minutes or 30 minutes outside Edmonton. It wasn't bad, so I go. I lived northeast Edmonton. I'd go. I'd come back home the same day, right? Um, but uh, there's people who lived, like had to go forget about Fort McMurray which is a couple hours up north right this was like you're going even further up right and I've been a few times they'd send me out there right and this is where they extract the sand from the ground like the oil from the sand so Canada doesn't have like natural oil like not sweet crude oil so Saudi Arabia for example when they get the oil out of the ground that's called sweet crude oil right away that can be converted in a refinery into you know the different types of gases uh. you know an 87 90 supreme canada and i don't want to get too technical on it you got to get the sand the oil out of the sand first oh wow okay. that's why they call it oil sands then you extract it okay, and then you that's what's called oil sands okay so it's called oil sands right mm. and then you have to upgrade it right take it um, from the sand now you take it to bring the sweet crude oil and then you refine it so it's a three-stage process so i actually worked in the water tree like the plants up north at one point, right? Where I would go back and forth to Calgary on my first internship. And yeah, man, there was times where you did see, like you would take a bus ride from your camp to the site and you'd see an animal, a bear, whatever it is. I've seen it a few times myself. And how dangerous is coming into contact with a bear? Because I remember when I was with these brothers, bro, it was it was, it was normal kal kalam. Like everyone knew about what to do if there's a bear. There was the little bear siren. Mm -hmm. People tell you, listen, there's a bear, bro. They yeah. did, right? I don't know. The thing is, like, oh, it depends on the bear. Yeah, brown bear, the black wild, bear. Yeah, no, you run from any bear, man. But like, it's uh, no, no, no. I heard you don't run. I heard that too, but I, I, I don't know. Like, you know, my instincts just run, bro. Some of them you have to get big, scream, make loud noises. Yeah, this, there's a siren. Remember? Yeah, yeah. The yeah they give you a little Hassan, spray Hassan, thing, Hassan, right? Hussein, Hussein. Hussein, yeah. Hussein, it's a little spray, yeah. and they give you like, yeah. But like, the truth is, you for what I had to do, alhamdulillah, like I wouldn't go into like the bears wouldn't come into like the 
it's like you'll see them on the highway there you know what i mean like from your air like from your spot where you sleep at to the actual site but some right? of the robbers will actually have to go into places that are dangerous. sometimes we'd have to go in yeah sometimes i'd go into the site but they're not commonly there right okay. the only time where it's kind of dangerous is if they're building a brand new site uh -huh. and they send you to that new site so before they can set up security barriers Ooh, okay. right so yeah people have right and i've seen guys record it and stuff right and is it recorded uh, someone getting eaten by being attacked not eaten by bear no just the bear walking like right, oh. with, like right outside their place <laughs> So there has been attacks and stuff, and it would be a big incident report where the bears would get attacked and attack people. Yeah, I don't remember too much of it. It's been like a decade, man. Right. So you so, had that experience. Mm -hmm. It seems stressful. It seems cold. They want people to shake yeah, their yeah, beds. Yeah. Potential bears. That sounds mm -hmm. long. And the money was decent. Was good, but yeah. Obviously, you had bigger dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it look. It's good money in some you know compare, but you're not gonna get ahead. You know, and live life. Why do you want to get ahead? Why is that important? Honestly, um, it's just, <laughs> I can give you one answer. I just want to live life comfortably. You yeah. know what I mean? Sure. I want to buy what I want to buy. I want to do more for my family. You know what I mean? Right? I think one time, it actually, one other time from the Islamic perspective, I got woken up one time. I remember it was like 2015. The guy did my taxes and he asked me, did you pay Zakat this year? I'm thinking, what is Zakat? <laughs> I didn't even think about ever paying Zakat because you, you never know, have the money. Not even close. Not even close, you, you know? Uh, you, you said something to Hashi, bro, which I, I also just want to focus on a little bit more, even before Zakat. Because uh, Zakat is if you have surplus money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you said taking care of your family. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people just breeze past very swiftly, very smoothly. Mm -hmm. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who's providing for his family, he's in the mm -hmm. path of Allah. Mm -hmm. He's in the path of Allah. In fact, I actually have two statements. I was actually having a conversation with my Sheikh, and I was actually talking to Sheikh about, you know, my, 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 since ever since I've been trying to spend more time with family, I feel like it's you know distracting me from like seeking knowledge and like you know even like you know when my family was in the UK, I'd be sitting in the masjid certain times comfortably whenever I want to. But now obviously you know you gotta give family time, right? So I was like, Sheikh, you know, um, he, he, he told he, he told me this hadith what I just mentioned. You know, he told me the statement by Ibn Taymiyyah, which well, is very powerful. I read it to you guys. Ibn Taymiyyah said he said talibul halal. He said seeking halal money when nafaka. Halal risk and providing al providing for your family members, babun azim. It is a massive act. La shay. Nothing compares to it. Min amal bir from the actions of good that you can do for someone. I.e., the greatest. If you look at levels of righteous deeds that you can do, we're not talking about salah. Salah is between you and Allah. Mm -hmm. Good that you can do for people. He said nothing compares. No action compares. You providing. For your family members yeah. And by the way This is coming from a man Who never got married Never had a family But he's admitting Saying yeah. there was There was nothing greater than that And not just that Another one that shocks me Abdullah ibn Barak He said لا يقع موقع الكسب على العيال شيء ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله He said Nothing compares To earning money For your family members Not even jihad And this is coming from Abdullah ibn Barak Who was a man Who spent half the year in jihad He spent half the year in jihad Now he is not talking about Defensive jihad He's talking about mm -hmm. The offensive, which is not obligatory on every single person, is, is farad kifaya, right? And on people with generally speaking, is recommended. This is, is must have. But point being is that that's not something small. No, it's not. Like, at it's all. very big to provide yeah. for your family. Yeah. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kafa bil mar ithman." Okay, maqal. That is enough for a man to have sinned. I, he, he, he doesn't need to sin anymore. He's reached the pinnacle of sin to forsake the rights. And the responsibilities of those who he is taking care of, his family members. So it's a very big thing. Now, some people think, oh, I just want my family to live comfortably. Bro, that's the prophet said that person is feast beat it. He wants to take care of his family members. He wants to provide for them so they're not so they're not broke. So they're not what? They're not hungry looking into other people's hands. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I know like having a nine to five in where I came from, even whatever that money is, because I would talk to how much the new grads and the people who make I knew it would never be enough. Do you know what I mean? The system there, it, it's meant to tax you. And honestly, I did have a serious drive to help my mother and father. You know, the older you get, I come from an immigrant parents. My parents immigrated to Canada in the 80s. It was, you know, especially as you get older, you start to realize and, you know, look back at how hard it was for them, you know? My dad had a really good job before he came, and when he came, it was just difficult for him to get a job. My mom practically broke her back and did a lot for us, you know what I mean? I remember the story and this is what like actually drives me more than a lot. I think I was 10 years old. It was the year 2000. I remember vividly. We used to go across the city and go buy dates off a truck 
And my dad was not in the country at the time. He was in Somalia? No, this is Canada. Canada. Oh, Canada, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. My dad was in Somalia at the time trying to start a business, but, you know, uh, I don't think it was working out at the time. But he, my dad, I respect one thing, he was an ambitious guy because he, was, he came from, he was doing good, but when he came to Canada, it was just way too difficult, the language barrier and stuff, but he always tried hard, right? And my mom, we'd be selling, I'm 10 years old, man. And I'm not kidding, me and her are going on a truck. We're driving a 1993 blue van or something like that, right? It was an old one, right? And we'd all like push the seats down or move the seats out, put them in the house and then go get these dates. And it was heavy, man. Like you'd get a box of, you know, four of them in one box, right? Like four silver tinfoil cans in one. We'd be unloading the car and, and then I just remember like, yo, this is not easy. I'm 10 years old. I got homework, you know, I'm in grade five and we got to do this and we got to go flip it. So we'd buy it. Okay. Then a few days later, we'd have to go and sell this, right? So we'd have to go to different houses and sell it. And my mom's like, you know, she's not like, it's, it's hard work. It's just to make ends meet. It's just to make ends meet. My brother would do it a lot of the time and and it was tough. So for me, anytime I think back to like, what's my purpose? It's, it's that, you know, before all else, it's like, yo, I have to give my mom a better life now that she's in, still alive. Perhaps in terms of business. Right? Yeah, yeah, because I know if I had a nine to five and, and did that, like, it would just never be enough to reach the goals I want for my family, yeah. right? For my parents, right? And um, so that's what drove me. If you ask me my drive, right? It, that, that's number one, right? It's like to help my mom and dad and the sacrifices <clears throat> that they took for me, you know what I mean? Kept me in an Islamic school, did what they could to keep me out of the ghetto, right? It wasn't easy, you know? And, and man, it's like, I feel so like as I'm older now I feel so far ungrateful I should have been so much better to them and alhamdulillah they're still alive and I do what I can for them now right and I feel so blessed that they're alive every day that I can do give back to them now more than anything else right but it's like that's the reason why I knew right away yo look this 9 to 5 whatever this is I'm doing here even if I go back and make the money um, it wouldn't be able to like give them what they want and even give me the life I wanted so what was the, because I, I can imagine a lot of people that are watching this right now mm -hmm. are sitting there and you're like speaking to their soul right now. Like they're like, yeah. well, I, I can relate to that so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was the first step that you took when you realized this is not what I want to do. This is not allowing me to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. The people are just like, what do I do? Yes. What did you do? So I went, I was finishing up school at that point. I came back, I was doing some classes and I didn't pass a class. Right. And at this point, I just was, I did not like the program, right? It was it was actually interesting, but I just, I didn't have the passion to it that I once did. Because when you see the work life and you come back, right? I know I can't do that forever. Mm. So I don't have the same drive to Yeah, work. I remember you were on a gap here when you- when Yeah, I, when yeah, I, yeah, I was doing my, exactly, yeah. So I was doing the internships, then I came back and I remember the Shell company kept like sending me messages, hey, you're gonna come back and work. And I'm thinking, not a day in my life am I going back to that place. There's no way, right? So I remember as I was studying one day, I was watching a Facebook ad and I saw some sheikh from Ottawa, that how many passed away and Amran even knows him. And they were teaching people sure. what drop shipping is. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, what in the world is this? Right? And there was something inside <clears throat> me always that knew I would find another way to make money, right? Um, I saw it, I was just like, I Googled it. This is like 2015, I think it was, or something like that. And I was just stunned. I'm like, what in the world is this? Like you set up a shop online, you run a Facebook ad, you ship the product from China to the person's address, right? This is so foreign to me at the time. Do you know what I mean? And I think it was foreign to most people, right? So I dove, I just jumped right in that weekend, right? I put, I barely had any money. I was still finishing up like my last classes, but I put everything into it, right? I built a website. I was trying to sell jewelry. You know what I mean, right? And I was getting sales. You run the ads yourself? Everything myself. I'm just watching clips online, Facebook ads for free, like YouTube clips. I'm just putting it together myself, right? People are trying to tell you, come buy my course. I don't have money for this stuff, right? And to be honest, like, as I think I'm, like, as I get older, a lot of those courses were pretty useless, you know? Because I'd get them for free later on or something, right? But, so I'm doing it myself. I'm making sales, but I'm losing money, right? Because the ad costs, you know, I know nothing about marketing, you know what I mean? And you start to realize it's more than just run an ad. It's actually no, like, you know, customer acquisition, know your numbers. What's your customer acquisition cost? You know, what's your cost per lead? How much is you're spending on the ad? How much is the product cost? Shipping times. I remember there was a girl I sent a product to in Philadelphia. She was just eating my products, not here. It's not going to get here for my birthday or something. And, you know, I'm getting nasty emails because China's taking forever to ship. So that's where it started, 
right? I would lose money, but in my mindset, I didn't really care too much that I was losing money. In my mind, I was learning something new. You know what I mean? And I knew that, yo, if I keep doing this, eventually something will come through. So you started off dropshipping mm -hmm. running ads, mm -hmm. but then you went and focused on the whole ad side of things. Mm -hmm. Facebook marketing, Instagram yes. marketing. Yes. So with that, obviously without going too much detail and to guard your privacy, like Alarm Baddick, you've done well in that space. Like, uh, but man, to be honest with you, uh, like it didn't go well for a while, right? Um, I want to be very transparent. This thing took years to make some decent money. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I stopped drop, I, I kept doing drop shipping and I wasn't making any money off that, but I think around, I started traveling to learn more. Cause I told myself, yo, I was done school, I need to learn. So I went to like Niagara Falls courses, alhamdulillah, I met a lot of people doing things, these weekend seminars. I would fly to Utah, do weekend seminars, pay money to learn. I invested in learning. And I mm. think one thing I'll tell like anybody who's listening and has a <coughs> journey for something, you really, especially at the beginning, you gotta be patient and invest in learning and investing in yourself. And that's the thing, like people will sign up to one course. Mm -hmm. think, okay, this is gonna be the means will ends. Well, there's two types of people. Sorry, three, I think, three. Mm -hmm. The first type of people are like, I'm gonna do it myself. I don't need no one to tell me what to do. I don't need to pay for a course. I don't, I don't need a mentor. Mm -hmm. I think that's foolish mm -hmm. because you're ignorant here. And it doesn't make sense. It's actually very unreasonable. It's very arrogant for you to assert that you're gonna be successful in this and you don't have any experience with our people that have spent 20, 30 years perfecting learning this craft. Mm -hmm. Second type of people who do one course yeah. and they'll do this one course hoping or thinking that this is the means or ends all. One, you know, we teach the Umrah Sa'a, we let people know. Mm -hmm. This will not make you a masterful businessman. This course will give you access to the Umrah industry, but we take a commitment as part of our values at the Brothers Club. So if you're going to join this course, you must, we make them sign a document at the beginning. They have to sign a contract mm -hmm. that they will commit to studying and growing in business. Mm -hmm. and that takes me to the third category, which are people who understand this is a lifetime commitment mm -hmm. in the sense where you will learn skills and develop through mm -hmm. courses, through books, through consultations, and also through doing. Yeah, yeah. You have to do, yeah. right? And those people are the ones who are always going to go far. Uh, absolutely, man. And I think you got to like, I want to take you in this like 2017, 18, nine, like 2017, 16 to like 19, those three years. Information wasn't as relative as it is now. This digital space was brand new, you know? Really, it was just starting to blow up, right? And a lot of people, you'd pay a little bit of money to, like, have a scheduled call with someone. And I don't have a lot of money, right? I remember one guy paid him $700, <laughs> and he doesn't show up for the call to teach me something, right? People are unethical, yeah. right? And I learned that very much the hard way. Like, people I would do work for and stuff. And I think this is where things, like, I think around 2018, I started to get better and better at it but there was always a block in the road. So I remember 2018, I went through this moment where I was like, all right, cool, yo, I've tried this for a while now. It's not going too well. I'm getting a lot of family pressure. Like, yo, you're an engineer. You're the first one in your family, you know, who, like, you know what I mean? Go, Go and do something. do something, you know? And and, and this time you're failing, you're, you're struggling. Not failing, sorry, but you're, you're, you're learning, I'm but learning. you're not, you don't have fruits. But yeah, because it's like to make this work, if you're going to do the drop shipping side or those courses, or I mean like Amazon, if be, you need a good cash cow to start with. You know, and I don't have that. And people are telling, few people tell me, we'll loan you, and I don't want a loan. Sure. I'm just, I don't want that, right? So I remember I got an intern, I got a job potential offer. It was like some company here in Dubai. And they're telling me, like, it's consulting, right? I think it was called Bain and Company. And I did the first interview, and I was thinking at this point, because my dad is really pushing me, try to move to the Middle East and get a job, right? I'm getting a lot of pressure at this point, right? Because obviously it's been a while since I graduated, and I'm not doing anything with my life. and my parents think I'm wasting my life at this point. So I remember I got called for some, an uncle of my passed away that September. It was just a tough time. And then I got called for like an opportunity to go study with someone in Utah. So I- Study dropshipping? Dro yeah, dropshipping kind of thing, you know? They're like, they'll teach, we'll set up a website with you. You know what I mean? The whole, the whole do it yeah, for do, you do type of package. Thing, right? And a lot of these guys are just scams. Like heads up watching, most people are just scam. Like I I've seen the insights of it where they'll set up a course for you, they'll set up a website, they'll charge you $5,000, they'll promise you the first 10 sales, right? They'll set up some ads and they'll come and buy it themselves. Oh really? Yeah, I've seen that a lot That's of times. Disgusting. 
you know, and you know, you just, you learn, and it's all a learning curve. You're going to get better. You're going to detect BS better. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I go to Utah. I'm learning, learning, learning. And I have to go to New York for the interview. At the same time, there's a lot of like people in the industry in California who are doing it and it's growing bigger and bigger, right? The ads thing. The ads thing. I'm seeing people in San Diego and like Orange County doing these big group sessions. It was like the digital marketing hub, especially the ads part, right? Okay. They have these big conferences and stuff there. In San Diego. Yeah, so I remember this is where I got like, you know. That's so profound. So that's why you in San Diego. Yeah, there was other things too, but that's like, that was one of the things because I'd be going to like, com like networking stuff and sessions there. You know, what that's, there. you know what that's so profound because like there's 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 so much here that we have to unpackage number one the importance of skills mm. to carry on learning to understand that you have to go to experts <coughs> to not become disheartened and dismayed because one thing second thing didn't work out to be to have a a a, a unresolved like to, 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 to have a resolve mm -hmm. that is unshakable and unbreakable uh but also one very important thing here is to place yourself in environments that are going to be optimal for you to succeed and grow in a particular thing you're trying to grow in which is one of the reasons why we push people to come to Dubai so much because mm -hmm. here in the UAE of course Muslim country and that's foundational but you can go to any Muslim country but if you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and you want to come to a Muslim country you can go to any Muslim country Hijra can be done to any Muslim country okay but if you're an entrepreneur Dubai makes complete sense because every second guy you talk to is a person who can connect you somewhere Look, I'll give you an example, yeah We were sitting inside of a cafe And there was a brother who came to visit us He's got this new fintech startup that he's trying to launch He's trying to get some funding for it And as he was doing, doing the presentation like, There's a guy who prays Fajr Salah with me in my local masjid I have no idea who he is He's sitting in the cafe drinking just a couple of seats down And his brother's talking about I need to raise 750,000 pounds The guy just pulls out to him and says um, I'm interested in investing yeah, you won't get that anywhere else. Ran mm -hmm. Random cafe. It's bro. It's not. I don't even live in like a primary hub in Dubai. It's not even like a. It's not even a wealthy area. Like it's just whatever. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And this what it's like. We 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 <laughs> we arranged this link up right in a yacht, and the whole objective of this we you know yacht is a thirty five seat yacht. We're all going to be going there inshallah uh, ta'ala Tomorrow And guys say Allah I'm better going to hear these things But the reason we did it Was for networking purposes We wanted to gather brothers Who are on their deen Who are also businessmen So they can support each other In terms of their deen But also we can network On a business level um, And uh, we invited a few people That we know We know some really good people Allah I'm better, right And then we told them You'll bring your friends So one brother is Bringing a guy Who's an angel investor Who's got like 150 million dollar Portfolio Sure. Uh, another brother he told me he sent an invitation to is the CFO of Azizi Real Estate. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's just a normal day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Another brother who's come is like the, uh, a marketer in some big firm, and he wanted to bring his friend who apparently is some bro is just small circle. Just sent a message out to a couple people that we know. You want to bring one or two extra guys, and then we're going to be on New York with these people. One to them cancelled Irrelevant point is that You want to place yourself In environments Also when it comes To seeking knowledge Like when I want to Seek knowledge And study the deen Who are the type of people I want to connect myself with Right I've got a list of ulama Who I speak to Right from different countries When I have masail I need to discuss There's certain mashaq I can just jump on the phone To students of knowledge That I can speak to I can gain advice from I can just go that, Like sometimes me and my brother We just fly to Pakistan To spend time with our sheikh Just to Go through some masail, finish a book. You have to put yourself in those environments. It's necessary. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I think one thing I have is like, so yeah, I think I went to, I was doing, the, I remember I was in, um, yeah, I decided to not go to New York and do the interview, right? I just said, forget it. You know, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna bet on myself. I think this is where it like, it's you know, Dubai you company. To, yeah, there was a, it was a consulting company, it's a global consulting company, and they wanted me to work out of Dubai, but the interview was in New York. Okay. So I remember like, you know, this is like, Dark moments you're Looking at yourself Your bank account And you're like Yo, Did you have any bank account that time? Nothing Nothing No more than a couple A grand max I don't know I really don't know the number So you, okay. Might have even been less Well it might have been less Yeah 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 It might, might have been less so, so how much would you say Like give a Less than 2k I mean, I, 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 Honestly I really don't know the number I, I Whatever that's, that's dollars That's Canadian dollars That's yeah, half yeah, yeah. of what we would say yeah, 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 So yeah, if it's a yeah. thousand pounds It's 500 pounds Yeah yeah I'm living off pennies here it's no And question. it's a good job opportunity But you decide yeah, yeah, to send it Yeah yeah this job's uh, Six figures You're gonna work in Dubai No tax Oh wow Right So wow. I asked myself This is honestly where You have to like Life changing decisions Am I gonna go work for someone For the rest of my life And build someone else's dream That's what I asked myself Right 
or am I gonna bet on myself? I might tell you shave your beard. I might tell you can't pray your size. Time I might tell you, yeah. you know. Not in Dubai. I don't think I'll tell you no, shave your beard. No, 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 no. Of course not. In Dubai. Whatever. But, but my point be. is that that's it's a global fan, right? So if he's in Dubai, he could have moved to America. He mm-hmm. could move anywhere. Yeah, it, it didn't matter what it was. It, you're, you're, the main thing is, yo, I want to build my own dream here, right? And bet on myself, right? And I knew I could accomplish this. So I just said, yo, I'm going to go west, forget about this Dubai, skip the interview, right? I came back to Canada, packed my bags, and moved to California. And things started to get a little bit better at that point, right? I started to have people reach out to me to do work, you know? Ads work. Ads work, right? I wasn't doing drop. I, I was still doing drop shipping, but every time I do drop shipping, like, I got good at it, but something would always come in the way. Like you need a business license, PayPal will block you, Shopify will block you. Mm. And this is the part where I knew I was like on the right curve. One time I remember I ran a store ad and one of my good friends of the Qadr, he's like, yo, I'll pay for the ads. Just try it out, you know? For his store? For a store. We just, well, I told him, listen, I think I know what I'm doing here. You know, at this point I'm comfortable because I don't like taking money from people unless I'm comfortable in, you know what I mean? I know I'll make it. So we ran an ad for a store and bro, the first couple of days, we were making a couple grand the first day. Like, a long bedding. Right away. What was the store, food? It was, no, it was, we were selling a robot vacuum. Oh, wow. Right? And it was doing well, but every time we do something, like something blocks us. You know what I mean? And China doesn't ship the product. It was just a mess, right? That was drop shipping. It was drop shipping. But we're making sales, but now I know if you give me a good product, I know how to make a good video out of it, I can get you sales, right? So just to bring it back people mm-hmm. who might not fully understand. Mm-hmm. So obviously when it comes to marketing, there's different ways you can market, right? So the er- area where you decided to go down was, was ads. And, yes, and Facebook ads was my specialty. Right, yeah. so many people, when they hear about ads, they still don't realize Facebook ads, Instagram ads, social yes. media ads. This is the way forward now because the price to put the ad out is actually very cheap, right? Mm-hmm. Compared mm-hmm. to advertising on a billboard. So you obviously double down on this skill. Yeah. You harness a skill, you develop a skill, and what you're saying is the person mm-hmm. gives you the ad spend, mm-hmm. and they give you a good ad. Yeah, a good ad. As the graphics, cr- the creative, yeah, the, the creative, creative has to be top notch, and a good product. Mm-hmm. Three things. Mm-hmm. You're saying that you now have the skills, Lombardic, to what? To at least make something there. Right. You know what I mean? And 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 the reason why this is such a profound skill is because this is the closest thing to printing money, mm-hmm. if you do it right. Yeah, if, I believe if, so. If, if you get your numbers right, if you get your numbers right as a company is the closest thing to printing money because as long as your the profit that you make per customer overshadows the cost of acquiring the customer if you can get that right if you can get your numbers right then as long as you're pumping money into the ad spend mm-hmm. getting money out but the issue is and here's the thing because I've I've, I've tried Facebook I've, I've tried the ad thing and <coughs> I never succeeded at it but it makes complete sense because I never committed to it for long enough but you obviously spent how much money would you say you spent on just learning, including the flights, including oh. the hotels, including how much do you think would you say you invested in trying to just learn the craft? I probably spent in terms of everything like over a hundred k before I made money USD. So you were making money and spending it, yeah, and I'd, on the skill. Yeah, I'd make money. I'd, you know, I'd lose it trying to learn something, or the ad would block whatever it might but, be. But you know why that's so, you know why that's so amazing is because now what you've done is you've helped people reset mm-hmm. their minimum standard. Yeah, like a guy would spend a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, ten thousand on a course, and think, "Well, I've been." You spent a hundred thousand in that you're making some, but whatever you're making, investing it back yeah. in yourself. Uh, yeah, you're investing what, in yourself. You have to ask, what's the alternative, right? Yeah. What else do you got going for yourself, yeah. right? And and for me, it was like I'm all in here, right? There's no looking back. So um, again, another moment. What happened is like at that point, I'm getting sales, I'm getting results, but I'm not getting paid always, right? Something blocks. A brother from Toronto tells me, "Yo, why don't we do some work over here in Toronto?" Right, and he's doing Islamic ads. Right, he's helping charities raise funds and things of that nature. And I'm thinking, yeah, I, you know, I met him before, good brother. I'm thinking, yeah, you know what, this is kind of fun, right? Let me try it. So he's like, I'll pay you like fifteen hundred dollars a month. I'm fifteen hundred dollars a month to live in Toronto. I'm thinking at this point, that's nothing. What the heck, right? But I'm thinking in my mind, yo, another opportunity to learn, right? So. Well, I commend this man. Yeah, I commend this. I go do, do, do you understand Abid? Mm. Masha, this is why I really rate what Abid's doing as well, Lamberic, because <clears throat> he, he he's mashallah cinematographer, videographer. Which term do you prefer? Mashallah. All the above. All of the above. All of the above. Mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah. Photographer, cinematographer, videographer, mm-hmm. Chor- <laughs> chorographer. <laughs> we gotta bring him on next. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, Allah and Beric. But mashallah, this brother here, mashallah, tabarakallah, obviously had a great skill, and he was making, I think, more money. Before working with us, yeah, 
now he's decided to take the leap, come here, move over to Dubai, work for us, gets paid less than what he was doing independently, but hopefully the skills that you're learning on the back end yeah. are overshadowing the growth opportunities oh. and everything. Right? right? For me, it was it was much easier because uh, like for you, you said you spent 100K years. Yeah, for me, it was like, like within a few days, I started seeing results. I was like, yeah, sure. for me, it actually felt like printing money. Yeah. I was like, oh my, I could literally go anywhere and just start making money from here. Yeah, your skills, it's a different industry. It's not just that though. He also had the support network of myself, or Bucker and everyone else. You were literally on your own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. yeah. So that's, I was a long soldier. That's, that's another thing. But the, the point that I think is important to focus in on here, what he's saying, don't worry, this is not me saying we're not going to give you a raise. But the point here is that we're saying, the point here is that you have to be ready for years. Because this is years. He's saying years. Mm -hmm. How many years, how many years have you been trying and then you accepted this job for 1500 a month? Dollars, by the way, which is about 750 pounds, just so you could learn. How many years in was that? It's been three years now. Look at that. So it's three years in, and he's and just. just but, you know, my uh, mindset, man, it's not a job. I'm just learning here. Yeah, you go. So, so what kept you going through three years? Because that's a very long time. Yeah, man. It was Talk to him, bro, because I sometimes I feel like he loses motivation. <laughs> no, because uh, honestly, it, it's not easy, man. And yeah, like I tell anyone who's trying to start this stuff, and I don't really talk about this. Like, I've never mm. talked about this. Imran, kind of good friend, you know, he helped me get a good client. I kind of owe him a lot, right? Mm. But you got to tune out the noise. You can't let people's opinions matter, right? If I cared about people's opinion, I would have went and got that job in Dubai or I might have got the job. Who knows, right? Uh, but you really have to look at yourself and ask, what is your long-term goal, right? Because if you ask anyone, I used to listen to a podcast. It's how I built this. I'm not lying to you. That podcast was motivating because you hear stories about other entrepreneurs who are really, really, really patient. And it's not these little clickbait Instagram pictures that just motivate you. This is a deep talk, right? And they motivate you. So you have to ask, if, I've seen so many of them who just kept pushing, right? And they wouldn't stop, right? And I think that really helped be like, okay, put into context, I'm just one of thousands of people doing the same grind, right? And I always look at it like, I talk to my mom and family members who would be looking at me. I'm like, guys, at the end of the day, alhamdulillah, like I can eat my food, I'm healthy, you know what I mean? I'm not even complaining. And you're right? learning. Yeah, and I'm learning. And man, it's, it's not easy being broke. Like, you know, it, it's tough. You're in your late 20s at this point, and you know, I'm wearing the same shoes for like two and a half years, <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. And one pair? I had one pair of Adidas. One of my cousins one time, oh, I mean, a lot of reward, one time bought me some nice shoes, like $25 ones, but they were really like discounted. It was good you, shoes. You know, it was so amazing. But I didn't life. care. I really did not care. Like there, there was zero. I, I was focused. I tuned out all the noise. Like people who called me, "What are you doing?" Like, like, yo, I don't care. Okay, right? forget about the noise. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting, and I feel like a lot of people are gonna relate to this, and it's been playing in my mind ever since you said it, is you reached that golden boy status in in your parents' eyes. You finished uni, chemical engineer. Yeah. You went into a nine to five, good money. How did your parents feel seeing their son go into that, and now you're there? Mm -hmm. And then they saw you just, in their eyes, fall off. Yeah, man, it, it's it's not easy at all. Um, I think what happened is there was one point I remember telling my sister and my mom, right? Like, yeah, I want to just wrap, let me just get a science degree or something general and just leave. And then they're like, no, no. And one of my uncles as well, he's very pushing me to get the engineering degree. So I told him, look, guys, I'm going to finish this degree for you guys right now. Oh, so you right? actually finished it just for them? I finished it just for them right uh, you know you need your daughter for your mother you know what i mean that's the most important thing right i did this to make my mom happy and uh, because i know how much she sacrificed right so i said i'll do this for you but this is the last decision in terms of like this way in life that i'm gonna do for you guys you know what i mean let me live my life the way i want to live i remember vividly i actually wrote it down it was like november something 2015 or 14 like way back and i stuffed the book and i wrote it down like yo this is the last time i'm gonna do a decision for someone else. And you right? finished uni? I finished it. You know, I signed up the pictures, the photos, grad photos. I didn't even care about it, right? I did that. And at this point, they're seeing this steep decline. But I'm like, guys, look, give me time. I'll make this work. As in they're seeing the decline of you? They're seeing me just mess around, move around, travel. They have to, you have to understand, when you're a Somali parent and you see a guy traveling without a stable income and these things. Yeah. They're just thinking you're messing around, right? Especially when you're hearing about this cousin, that cousin, this friend, yeah, this yeah, person yeah. who's doing this, 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 this job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely, completely just, I just tuned it all out. I said, you guys, you know, I'm going to figure this out. You know what I mean? And money's like, once, <laughs> like, I, st I travel even more now. And before it was like, ah, he travels reckless, recklessly, you know? It was like a bad stigma about me, right? And they don't know I'm traveling 
something learn or get something done right and it was like a, it was like a joke at this point this guy's just traveling recklessly right you but once you start, as well, huh? yeah and, and like literally but they don't complain now that i help them out and take care of them like i still travel the same way right but no one says anything now you know what i mean so um it, it was tough me sit here act like it was something easy it was not right but i always like i had some really good friends you know alhamdulillah like one's name's ahmed his nickname's hollywood you know another one's smiley i'm running smiley. smiley another one abdul qadir and these guys really like supported me I will lie, like without them i'm nowhere you know and like i would see them work their nine to fives and stuff and i'd be like yo dude i, I could never do that you know I could never do that. I'd visit them, I'd see them, and I'm like, yo, how do you live like this? Right? Not necessarily them specifically, but you know, they all had good careers, mashallah. But you know, if you're a nine to five and you have a career, I just want to make this clear. If you're happy with your profession, may Allah reward you and bless you and make it better for you. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to criticize people who have not in businesses here, right? Yeah. Or it's anything. not for everyone. It's just not for everyone. It's not for me, but like I mean, money providing for your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually like, respect it because this life is not easy either. Right, it, it's really a lot of stress. It's actually, you know? it's it's actually more stress, but of course it is, some right? People are built for it, but the reward is better. I feel like, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not easy. So people who are happy with their day jobs, it's like, you know, it may not be for me, but well, I say my law rewards you tenfold. So we do need people who are doctors and yeah. nurses and engineers, accountants and engineers. This is the way the world goes, right? Um, I mean, we need to hire them. Right? I, it, <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, we, we, but, yeah. but, but, but we, we need their good services. Jobs. Yeah. The, point, the point is, we hire them, we provide a halal environment for exactly, them, we yeah. give them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I didn't mean that in like a disrespect. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. As in, yeah, as in, as in if, you, if you know, we, if mm -hmm. you hire them, yeah. let's say if, if you were a CEO, you know, if I hired them rather than John over here, yeah. I would mm -hmm. be a better CEO than him. I'd rather I'd rather have my brother working under me than under mm -hmm. some. Yeah. Some cool. So that's yeah. a question. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll wrap up the story basically at this point is that I started doing these. So that's pretty much to answer your question, right? I made that promise to myself that I would do what I want selfishly at that point in my yeah. life. And but I it knew wasn't it was selfish because your drive and passion yeah, was to yeah, help you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. I just did it my way. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to do it like the but way. Surely that the did. whole way they didn't understand that there Nothing. was a goal. There was an end yeah, at, yeah, through yeah. This, this route of being an entrepreneur. Bro, it was a nightmare. If I just told you some of the messages and the things I went through. That's really interesting Relatives look at me like That's a bomb. Everyone's going to go through that regardless. Because being yeah. from an ethnic minority or whatever is that. I, I'll tell you something. I mean, one thing that I've observed off speaking to him and all the other podcasts and just my personal life, everyone else's life, your life, all the brothers that we know that are entrepreneurs. Honestly, the curve of entrepreneur's life is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Literally, there's, everyone's going to have that moment of being homeless or having hardly any money in their bank account. Everyone's gonna have that moment of family just looking at them like, "What are you doing?" Everyone's gonna have that moment of, you know, just trying, failing. Like though this up and down curve is gonna be constant until, and here's the thing: you have to be put place of trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Keep trying hard, keep working hard, and looking for the opportunity where, bang, yeah, it's yeah, gonna yeah. take off, and it does take off. Inshallah, it's a very scientific process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, you know, I read this book by one this. You know what? Tell this part of the story about yeah. that moment where things took off for you, yeah. and then I want to mention this point after this point about. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, that's the mindset, right? It, it eventually will take off, and th that was my mindset. It'll it, it'll eventually go good. You just have to be patient on it, right? So um, I started doing the charity ads with that brother in Toronto, and Allah Mubarak, like that was probably the most rewarding kind of work I ever did because we're helping build mosques, we're helping, you know, and I'm not getting paid a lot. So this is actually where. I'm good at the knowledge, but I'm not getting paid, and I'm really good now, okay, right? Alarm. But I'm really broke. I couldn't afford a haircut, right? I looked homeless. I'm honest to God, if you saw me then, one of my cousins saw me, he came to Toronto, he's like, yo, what's up? Like, get a haircut. <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll tell this story, and this is like the hardest point of it all, right? And I've had harder points where I'm sleep on couches and stuff, and I mean, I'm not the kind that likes to show, hey guys, I'm trying to make it or any of that stuff, like, no. I would work this job, in the morning, I was sleeping with some at a sharing a room. It was, it was rough. They were new to the country and they were funny. They were trying to pay me to marry a girl for citizenship and stuff <laughs> like that. And they were having beef. So I would get up at seven every day. I, I actually, I, after Fidget, I sometimes stay up, sometimes I go back to sleep. But anyways, eight o'clock to like five o'clock, I'm working at this spot, an office spot, right? I swear to God, in my mind, this isn't work. This is learning to me. I don't work for no one anymore, right? This is my vested interest, right? I would do that. It was in Markham, Far East, right? And um, then it was the most weird thing. There were some other guys who were doing drop shipping get together, 
in far west, like Etobicoke, near Mississauga, at an Ikea. I swear to God, it's the most random thing. I would go from Markham. And they would all, sit in the Ikea. And just, just sitting at the Ikea and we're going and we're all working and together. And we do weird things like that. We sit in random cafes. <laughs> but this is an Ikea, man. It was the weirdest thing okay. in the world. You know and what you'd mean? go to like, you know, where they show like, this is what your home could look like. And you just sit there. <laughs> sit down on the, the desk. Yeah, like a laptop. It, it was horrible. I would go all people, the way across. People probably thought I mean, these guys are part of the, these guys are props. <laughs> They're showing you what your house would look like. But that's actually deep. If you, don't have a, if, <laughs> if you don't have an office, Bro, just go work in Ikea. <laughs> These guys were making money. It was just weird. They would just choose this weird meetup spot, right? And I'm running ads for their websites. In Ikea. In Ikea. Well, like, you're serious, bro. Right? <laughs> so we're selling, like, massage guns, and we're killing it. I'm doing most of the ads. Well, I'm very. So I'm working at the daytime, guys. And these guys, we don't have a structured contract. I don't even know how much I'm getting paid. Again, I'm learning. I'm at the first time in my life where I can spend someone else's dollar to learn. So wow. I would do the first time, I, would, I had a rental car, so I would go to the first office, work there for eight hours, do the Islamic ads, where I'm learning about, one thing about drop shipping is really good is you learn all phases of marketing. You learn that the creative, subtitles, how to edit an ad, right? Ad copy, right? Each of these things can be separate businesses later, mm. how to run a Facebook ad, right? And you know, one thing I'm grateful I'd finished the engineering, because engineering taught you how to read numbers and dashboards very well, right? It, mm. it like, it wired your brain that way, okay, right? Okay, better. So I'm working the daytime. We're running ads for these mosques and we're killing it. We're raising like 50, I'm raising 50K a day for these mosques. Wow. It, it, and I'm editing oh, clips. I'm, I'm like, wow. I'm literally like editing clips and I'm, you know, learning what a hook is, how to put it at the beginning of a clip. You know what I mean? This mosque's about to shut down and it really was. And, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, we got it done. We reached the goal. And then at the nighttime, I'm selling these um, massage, guns. massage guns and we're making like four or five K a day and wow. I'm doing all the ads. And then after this, I'm still broke. You gotta understand me. I'm broke. I'm doing Uber from like ten to two, with the rental car You're just to get my food. The whole yeah, day. I'm working till two, right? I need to make at least fifty to sixty bucks so I can pay for the rental car, the gas, and my food for the next day. And I'm only sleeping like four or five hours. And I'm doing this for like two months straight, right? Really? Like. Seven the weekends I can kind of sleep a little in. And during exam. this process, you're getting calls from your parents saying what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a nightmare on that side. So I'm doing this for a few months, not long, three months, and then eventually, uh, eventually from there, alhamdulillah, I start to get my own clients. Right, I started to, you know what I mean, do my own things. But I, I'll literally remember I came to the UK. I told Amran, Amran, look, I'm really good at this now. Right, what can you do for me? He got me one client, and then that client. You know, one thing with me, I kept relations with people, you know what I mean, right? And this thing about business, you have to keep good relations with people. I got another client from there, but I think it was like a one week period, I'll never forget, it was like COVID, where my account went from just less than a couple K to like, I had that boom moment. There's there's, there's um, a really important point to the story that I really want to focus on, and hopefully this will kind of bring things back for people, is that so many lessons we took across this. Mm -hmm. You came to the UK, and uh, we hadn't seen each other for a while. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, you reach out to me saying, Look, I'm looking for clients, a client, or whatever have you. So, one of the reasons I connected you to that client was because of the relationship we had prior. And this is an important point that people need to really understand is that if you have good relationships with people, they will feel like they have to go above and beyond for you. Like, because of the time that we spent in Canada, it was mm -hmm. so lovely. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I was, Wallahi. It was one of the best times of my life. The same here. Yeah, honestly, it was one of the best times Alarm of my Beric. life. But it was it was Alarm raw data. I remember we these guys set up a whole tour Alarm Beric. We'd be remember after the events we'd just be talking to all the people to like Yeah, yeah. You know when I say I would sit and speak to every single person who wanted to line up and speak to me and give them advice, life advice. Let's say the event and at nine to one to him and we would speak to them. Do you understand? And just the vibes were so good. My brother came as well. It was that's where the whole one drama happened. I lost my channel. There's so much that was going on. He, he drove us crazy, by the way, guys. Let me be very clear. <laughs> he drove us nuts, man. Oh, and man. Um, no, but I was. It was. It was a truly, truly, truly amazing experience. And it was. It was when I was given hospitality that I felt indebted to, in the sense where I just felt indebted, bro. And, and, and this is the thing in it Allah said in the Quran man sana ilayk, man sana ilaykum Whoever does good to you Pay him back <laughs> Allah said Is there any reward for good Other than good? <laughs> the reward for good is good And then I stumbled across this book 
which I've referenced a couple of times, I really would love people to pick this up. It's called Influence by Robert Cialdini, where he talks about the six, seven laws of influence. He mentions one of the ways to get people to do what you want them to do for you. He says, be good to people and give them something. The natural human inclination is what? To reciprocate. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying you do this in disingenuously. You didn't know this. You were just, no. just being good. And right? let, me, let me add in. I, got, I, I always tell people. Yeah. You know, Steve Jobs said in like a uh, Stanford graduation speech one time, you can only connect the dots looking back, mm. right? I got criticized by people. Why are you traveling with the sheikh, finish your school, all that. Mm. But it's the same. And I always say to myself, why is there anything wrong to do any khair? You know what I mean? So it's the same khair. Because he, when he helped me get that first client and I got the other client from that same one, that was the life-changing game, you know? And then alhamdulillah, I got a lot of other clients. But those, that was the game changer. That's what like really like I, I got my own business now I got my own thing and I was getting reached out by crazy like until today that is the gold standard client. Till today no, no word oh, of yeah. a lie right oh, okay. but if I had listened to people and not done the khair Allah pays you back way later on it was 2014 we got like six years later right? 2021. 2020 yeah 2020 I think it was 2020, 2020. it was COVID so you know it, you got to be patient and know that good will come back to you. And 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 that's the point is that, you know, people talk about luck. I was reading I was reading this book a while ago by this big entrepreneur, angel investor. I won't mention it, the name of the book, because he just, he's got a whole chapter on shirk. <laughs> it's literally a chapter on shirk in the book. But oh, yeah. but he's a, but he's he's uh, in terms of a businessman, he's a masterful businessman. But one of the things he mentions, he says that you cannot succeed. In business without luck. Amy. This is about the statement because you believe in Qadr, right? Everything's decreed, there's no such thing as luck. But he defines luck in a different way. He says different types of luck. He says the type of luck that I'm talking about is is you preparing yourself. You prepare yourself to receive luck. I.e., literally what we just talked about. Which is the the word luck is wrong. Mm -hmm. the word luck is wrong. Does that make sense? Have you heard of the red? But I, I would I would change that. Word to opportunity. Have you heard of this? This called the red car, something. You know what I'm talking about? No. On the way here, how many red cars did you see? None. We saw an M3. I, saw I one. mean, you probably don't know. <laughs> we saw an M3. Yeah, I don't. As in, I don't know. <laughs> but now, imagine I told you, for every single red car you see when you leave your house, you're gonna get a thousand pounds. I will look for every single. How many? One. You would know exact the exact number, right? A hundred percent. The model. The opportunities are just like that. that. Mm. You, if you're out here looking for opportunities, mm. you will see them when they you'll come and you'll find you grab them. <coughs> Otherwise, if not, bro, those will pass by you and you, you're not going to be aware. You, you won't even realize, bro, I stepped into the lift and the CEO, one of the biggest companies was in that lift with you. Had you looked at him and said, oh, this guy's well dressed. He seems like he's got, I mean, it's a conversation. How's it going? What you but that guy could have stepped that lift, an opportunity to, to do something. He could have been an investor in your business. That never, like, like, like brother, brother Mahmoud. Yes, like he yeah. just he just randomly starts speaking to a guy who turned out to be a minister from Nigeria, talking to another guy he turned out to be Paul Pogba, <laughs> and he didn't even know yeah. who he was. Must have got a picture yeah. on his on yeah. his uh, on Instagram with Paul Pogba, and he had no idea who he was before you but, met him. But, but but that's but that's that's the point is that is that by by injecting goodwill in people, i.e., mm -hmm. doing good, being mm -hmm. leaving good impressions on people, um, by you know, learning and placing yourself in right environments and connecting with people and keeping good relationships with people. This is all, all of this is you lining yourself up for that opportunity that's going to come. Mm -hmm. That will come, <clears throat> inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. it will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one thing is also like, alhamdulillah, like I stayed away from anything that was like unethical. It's easy to make money in this industry if you want to be unethical. Right, like people mm -hmm. I know who know nothing after getting like a few sales in a day will go make a course that they don't know nothing about, mm. right? And they'll literally steal other people's course knowledges and stuff. And you know, I've been I see people with my own eyes, I've seen people lie right in front of me. And you know, this is where you just have to have tawakkal, right? And patience that Allah will make it work for you. Yeah, so look, if someone wants to get involved in the ad game, mm -hmm. right. What would be the advice? We've understood from this that it's that it's that it's you got to play the long game. Yeah, yeah. it's not gonna happen overnight. Mm -hmm. um, although I'm sure you did, I'm sure you'd agree. Let me know if, if that if you had a mentor, someone mm -hmm. that you could just 
spend time with to break yeah. everything down to you, mm-hmm. possibly you could have sped up things. Like imagine possibly. you had you now, 2020, 2024, mm-hmm. Hashi, guiding 2020, 2014 Hashi, yeah, you yeah. probably would have reached where you are now in oh, a year oh, or two. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe no, even less. No, I think about it is. No, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, problem, problem can't put a yeah. time on it, but it speeds up, having it a mental speeds up the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. If someone has drive and you find a good man, because now this is a lot different than back then. Finding someone good now is a lot easier because there's more options. Okay, the one thing I really want to discuss with you because I feel like you're going to come to this point is that you, really your expertise now, Alam, if I'm not mistaken, is the Muslim community. Yeah, I, I think that's... W- which is which is actually really surprising. And, and look, I, I, there are many people that run ads. Yeah, uh, I yeah, was yeah. speaking to a brother the other day who was connecting with a guy who doesn't work on projects unless they are £100,000 a month ad spent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. very normal, yeah. And... He was not ready to take on our project. He's like, it's he's he was like, it's 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 long. Mm-hmm. You're targeting the Muslim community. It's going to take you months to build up the audience. Da, 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 but you've already done it. I love yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And you've already built up mm-hmm. the Muslim audience because Facebook doesn't allow you to now target based on religion. No, no, they took that out. They took that out. But we have pixels and other ways to do it. You know. So actually, this is an asset that you have that's nuts. Allah <laughs> I don't look at it that way, but yeah, I guess so. Yeah. No, I, well, I, we, we, I'm saying no, na- now, yeah, yeah. We're, was it? Now we're looking for the next. You had the gold standard client. Mm-hmm. Now we're looking for the platinum standard client. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? So you've like, I want you to take this opportunity, bro, to mm-hmm. let the people know I can belly because someone might just be sitting there thinking, you know what, bro, mm-hmm. this guy has got what I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's get it cracking. So, like, what what does that mean? The fact that you have you have the ability to target mm-hmm. a Muslim audience. In any country in the world that Muslims yeah, live in. Live. You know, the truth about it is, Ben, is that a lot of people don't actually deep how powerful this is. They really, really don't. You know, I've explained, I've sat with people, I've told them, right? And I've, you know, and it's extremely powerful because I could literally target Muslim women in a certain niche, in a certain ages, you know, 25, 35, with a certain abaya, right? And you have With to, a certain abaya. With a certain color abaya and northeast. You using ads to try to find a wife. No, oh, no. You could though, sure. but no. you could though, right? Well, could Look, you? I can run ads you? for Sunday match if you want. No, no, wasn't, no, no, no. Huh? We could run ads for Sunday match. You're missing the question here, brother. We could run ads for Sunday match. No, 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 no. Arif, Arif, this brother wants to go to the moon. Wants to also get married. He wants. He wants. Yeah, we could run ads for Sunday match. Can you put his face? Can you put his face in front of a girl? From a with a particular age background demographic. Wearing a particular buyer. He goes, I want to find a sister. Like, you just said that. You can put no, I can put like the abaya. Like let's say I'm selling a certain color abaya. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I want to run ads to Muslim sisters. That wear that type of abaya. Like that. Assume I assume like. Yeah, so that you could ru- so you could run an ad with run his face on it, yeah. thing to sisters that wear the type of abaya that he likes. So he could just be holding that. Abaya. No, I don't know if the sister wears that type of abaya, but like I'm assuming they do. No, you yeah, could. You're going in the wrong direction here, man. <laughs> let's go back to the main point, guys. I don't want to get obviously. Into- obviously, there's a lot of there's, the, you know you, the ad might end up in front of the person that you didn't intend. But he would no. But Facebook it's just look. Anybody who knows, once you have a good audience and good pixels and good data, you can target Muslims, especially because I've done it for a long time, right? And I have the audience now, the database to be able to target it effectively, so people don't understand. Like, yo, if you want to sell something like a Umrah group or a Hedge or something, I'll never forget. Like, my first thing was trying to do a Hedge one for someone, and I don't think he took my work serious, so I just moved on from him, right? But um, like, you can target all of these things, you know. And so, get like, so you were targeting Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Sorry, I told you, <laughs> we, were, we were targeting Muslims for like donations for mosques. So you wanted right? Muslims' money? Yes, for the mosque because it's sadaqah at the end of the day. Just, dramatic stuff for the intro. Yeah, intro. yeah. Please <laughs> just erase that guy. Huh? <laughs> this guy's crazy. So, um, like, yes, yeah, so we're targeting Muslims, for example, for like a mosque, right? And mosques are a lot harder. Targeting mosques. For a mosque. It's getting out of hand. (laughs) raise funds for a mosque. So honestly, like, I don't just do Muslim stuff anymore. I've done software companies. You know what I mean? I've got really good results off software clients, right? Like, uh, especially when you're in California, I had some site, like, biotech stuff I run ads for. But the Muslim one was the most rewarding when I saw messages being built. Charities going to people, right? And Mm. making sure the money gets to charity. And alhamdulillah, it it was the most, most rewarding kind, right? I think I made more money in other stuff, to be honest with you mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. right? I made more results in the other side, right? 
but the Muslim stuff was always the most rewarding. So if someone wanted to get into this step-by-step -step quick yeah. fire, what should the steps be that they take? Number one, number two, number Well, three. first things first, I think, you know, you have to have a little bit of, you have to learn what marketing's about, right? And digital marketing, right? I think you got to find a really good course. There's a course by a brother named, uh, I don't know if he's Muslim, Rab, Depesh, he's British, right? I think I gave it to you, Imran, right? Uh, Depesh, it's a really good course, right? He <laughs> teaches Facebook ads and the marketer mindset behind it. Because you have to understand, eventually, man, running the ad and getting it in front of the right person, <coughs> it has some struggle, right? Yeah, but you'll, 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 you'll figure it out, right? But are you showing the right creative, right? You mm -hmm. have to have a marketer mindset. And I had an engineering mindset, but I had to learn marketing. Which right? is one of the reasons why I, I see to you a lot, Abid, the Masha has been picking up on it, is that, you know, like when it comes to cinematographers and graphic designers, I speak mm -hmm. to Sammy, our graphic designer about this as well. Yeah. So you might be great at yeah. making a pretty picture, yes. a pretty video, mm -hmm. but will it sell? Exactly. Will right? it sell? So, so I would advise brothers who are getting cinematography, like, Try to stack I think any skill. Yeah, any skill. You should have marketing on top of it. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, stack the skill, stack the skill. So especially because I, I see a lot of brothers now doing this camera work, but now also have an eye mm -hmm. for that which will convert. Exactly. I know how to tap into that. Yeah. And Facebook ads, this is the good thing about it. And this is what like I felt like my strong because I eventually just got into like I do consulting for people who just want to like, hey, our Facebook ads not working, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. And you got to really look at your yeah, Facebook look dashboard look. and look, okay, so the hook is the first, because Facebook dashboard, the ads part, it shows you like how many people watched at 15 seconds, 25%, 30%, whatever it might be, you know, you shut up your metrics and we call it like the marketing funnel, right? First they see the ad and then, you know what I mean? Click the ad and then la they reach the landing page, how much of the video they watch. And I like set it up in a chronological order where it's like, see the video, click on the, first they see the thumbnail, then they click on the video, then they've watched X amount of percentage, right? And you could literally look at the metrics of the dashboard. You'll see, all right, yo, we had a fallout after like 25%. So when you go back to your video, you realize, all right, at the 25% mark of my video, if it's, let's say, one minute, at the 15 second mark, I got to edit this part out to make a loop for them to continue watching it. Mm -hmm. Right? And Mr. Beast, if you watch his videos, he's really good at hooking people continuously in, mm -hmm. hey, part B, part C, come check, the, you know what I mean? So I think that's what that first mosque I worked on really well that did really good is I kept going back to the video, right? Changing the thumb, the hook, then changing different parts of the videos to see how much can I get people to watch at least 50, 60%. <coughs> and if someone watches like 60%, then they go to the landing page. And then I added something called the hot jar on the landing page where I would you could see, okay, how much before they click the button to donate or whatever they do. And it's a lot of psychology. All right, so now people are like, I'll never forget there was a time where we were running a project for a mosque in New Zealand and it was brilliant. I remember they would write like Muslim community center in, you know, Queenstown and something like that, right? Then one brother's like, listen, and I couldn't believe it. And he was right. And we argued, but I, I eventually did what he asked me. And it was like, he said, change it to messages in, you know what I mean? Last messages or only messages in Queenstown. He added the word message, not yeah. Islamic center. I'm not lying to you. It was Ramadan. We literally, I think we were raising like, I think it was whatever, it was like a small number, under 20K a day for that masjid. So Ramadan's the good months. The next day, without changing anything but the landing page title, it doubled to 40K. Wow. I'm Allah 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 so that, that taught me that, okay, people want to donate to a mosque. What's an Islamic center? It's kind of complicated, is it? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's it's gray area. So you have to know every part of the funnel from the video to your landing page to the checkout page making sure that it's optimized efficiently can right if people wanted to uh, get a consultation from you a charge paid consultation yeah can they? honestly i rarely do it now i rarely do it but um if it's something like really just reach out <laughs> i've never done this before man like how, i don't how, have any how personal much, how much how much would make it worth it your, worth your time if they paid Depends on the client. If it's something big, right? Like, depends also ad People spend, are gonna right? You now, so I'm yeah, just saying. If it's big ad spend, like, yo, the thing is, if it's something like under $1,000 and I know the person, I'll do, if I have like some time, I'll do it pro bono. But there was like a few big clients I had in California where it's like, yo, just come look at our just ads have, dashboard. Make your life easy, one standard price to be willing to pay. <laughs> it depends on the ad spend, but like, if it's a big one, if they're spending more than 50K a month, right? then yeah, I would charge at least a couple grand to even look at it and get into it because it takes time. I got to look at the landing page. I got to look at the at video. You know, I got to reset up their dashboard, right? Okay. To perfect. understand everything. And if someone wants your, if someone wants your services mm -hmm. in terms of a client, how could they get in touch with you? 
And I'm not taking on anything right now, to be really? honest with you. Yeah. It's because we took him. <laughs> <laughs> well, more like I had no choice. It drove you crazy. But no, I'm just joking. Yeah. I'm not taking on anything really right okay, now. Okay, like, hold on, buddy. Honestly, I'm growing my own things, you know? Okay, but just, you know, it's always good to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there reach is out anyone. to Imran, reach out to me, you know what I mean? Okay. Right? And um, if it's so something. And also, if you're interested in marriage. Yeah, let's continue talking about business. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have a LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah, Mohammed Hashi. On okay, LinkedIn, yeah. people can reach him on LinkedIn, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Mohammed, barakallah feet. May Allah bless you, We had an amazing conversation. You know, that was honestly truly fruitful, motivational, beneficial. Likewise, for me, I'm also Allah and Barik, Allah, may Allah protect us from evil. I, I mean, yeah. I'm really excited to work with you as well, bro. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we're going to do, inshallah, ta'ala. Beating it hopefully you're still with us. Is uh, one one of one of the one of the one of the things I really want to do is all of the business stuff that we're learning, in terms of sales, marketing, ads, customer satisfaction. Da da da. We're gonna use this for one big data project that we're gonna launch in the coming years. Inshallah, I'm gonna use inshallah, all these skills. Inshallah. We're gonna run ads for the sake of Allah, to fill up the masajid, ads for data purposes. Target these guys with these messages, these guys with these messages, inshallah ta'ala. We'll yeah. get the money first so we can use it for the sake of Let me just say one more thing. If anyone's trying to get into any sort of business in the digital space, well, I just keep trying. You know, don't quit. It's it's possible to make things work this day. The times have changed. Tune out the noise, focus, you know, never forget about your salahs. But like, you know, a lot of people who are on the verge of quitting, and I, I was listening to podcasts and they would talk about it literally in the podcast. You know, don't, you know, we're about quitting. You know, you can make this work. It just requires a lot of effort. And inshallah, you're you know, what's shocking something. is that you was watching those podcasts mm-hmm. at a time when you were struggling. Now you are yeah. on a podcast. Hopefully, hoping someone. It's my first ever podcast. I never speak publicly about any of this stuff. Anyone who knows me, I just live like a regular guy. I don't talk about any of this stuff, you know. So, well, I mean, uh, you're driving a a tomorrow along, buddy. That, that, that's your rental <laughs> as a gift Alhamdulillah Khair with that said man Subhanak Allah Mabihamdik Ashadu an la ilaha illa Anta astaghfiruka Atu ilayk Assalamu alaikum Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh